Hi, Geometry Scholars. Here we are in Chapter 10, Lesson 4. We have some really cool theorems um, today, and I think I got like four theorems and five examples, so let's get started. First of all, if you take a look at this picture, try to see what makes sense. You see um, things that we already know. The central angle is marked in red, and that arc that it intercepts that it cuts through is called the intercepted arc. Then we also have something called an inscribed angle. So that's new today. Do you see how the blue angle, the vertex is right on the end? That's what it means to be inscribed. And also, if you extended the blue lines, you would see that they would go exactly through R and P. And so they are also part of that intercepted arc. So an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on a circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. So RQ is a chord and PQ is a chord. An arc that lies between two lines, rays, or segments is called an intercepted arc. So that's PR. And a polygon is an inscribed polygon when all its vertices lie in a circle. So say if you had a square drawn here, um, or a triangle that would be inscribed. So that's just to get us started. Um, basically what you're gonna learn in this lesson is how to use those inscribed angles as well as inscribed polygons. Some of the vocabulary have, have, has already been introduced. Inscribed angle, intercepted arc, subtend, inscribed polygon, and circumscribed circle. Remember you can always look in the glossary in your book or on the website. So here's the core concept, an inscribed angle and intercepted arc. An inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on a circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. An arc that lies between two lines, rays, or segments is called an intercepted arc if the endpoints of a chord or arc lie on the sides of an inscribed angle, then the chord or arc is said to subtend the angle. So there's three of our vocabulary words, but I had just mentioned the inscribed angle is AC. The intercepted arc is arc AC and B intercepts arc AC, but arc AC subtends angle B and AC segment subtends angle B. Keep that in mind when we go through these theorems. So theorem 1010 is how to use this uh, inscribed angle. The measure of an inscribed angle is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So ADB is right here and this arc AB is twice as much as the angle or you can think of the measure of the angle as half as much as the arc. There's a little proof here um, it involves only three cases, case one, two, and three. If center C is on a side of an inscribed angle, then it's going to be half. Otherwise, it's inside or it's outside. So those are three cases, and it is example 37 in your book. Here's how to use to solve a problem. Find the indicated measure. Part A, the measure of angle T. Part B. The measure of R and Q R. Solution. Part A. Locate angle T in the diagram. Notice angle T is an inscribed angle that intercepts R R S. The measure of an inscribed angle is the measure of an inscribed angle is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So the measure of angle T is equal to one half the measure of R R S. Substitute 48 degrees for the measure of R R S. This gives you one half times 48 degrees, which equals 24 degrees. So the measure of angle T is 24 degrees. Part B. Locate arc QR in the diagram. Arc QR does not subtend any angle in the diagram. Use other information given to find the measure of arc QR. Notice angle R is an inscribed angle that intercepts arc QT. And segment TR is a diameter, which means arc TQR is a semicircle. 
So you can first find the measure of arc TQ and then use this measure and the measure of arc TQR to find the measure of arc QR. By the measure of an inscribed angle theorem, the measure of angle R is equal to one half the measure of arc TQ, or the measure of arc TQ is equal to two times the measure of angle R. Substitute 50 degrees for the measure of angle R, and this gives you two times 50 degrees, which equals 100 degrees. Because arc TQR is a semicircle, the measure of arc TQR is 180 degrees. So the measure of arc QR is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of arc TQ. Substitute 100 degrees for the measure of arc TQ, and this gives you 180 degrees minus 100 degrees, which equals 80 degrees. So the measure of arc QR is 80 degrees. We've got a second example for finding the measure of an intercepted arc measure of arc RS and the measure of angle STR. What do you notice about angle STR and angle RUS? Solution. Locate arc RS in the diagram. To find the measure of arc RS, look at the information given in the diagram. You are given the measure of angle RUS is 31 degrees. Notice angle RUS is an inscribed angle that intercepts arc RS. So, from the measure of an inscribed angle theorem, you know that the measure of arc RS is equal to two times the measure of angle RUS. Because the measure of angle RUS is 31 degrees, this is equal to two times 31 degrees, which equals 62 degrees. Now find the measure of angle STR. Locate angle STR in the diagram. Notice angle STR is an inscribed angle that also intercepts arc RS. So, by the measure of an inscribed angle theorem, the measure of angle STR is equal to one half the measure of arc RS. Because the measure of arc RS is 62 degrees, this is equal to one half times 62 degrees, which equals 31 degrees. What do you notice about angle STR and angle RUS? The measure of angle STR is 31 degrees, and the measure of angle RUS is also 31 degrees. So angle STR is congruent to angle RUS. Pretty nifty. Okay, we're going to do another theorem. Inscribed angles of a circle theorem says if two inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc, just like they just did, then the angles are congruent. So that's pretty easy to see from our last example, and you can just use that theorem now. Given the measure of angle E is equal to 75 degrees, find the measure of angle F. Solution, both angle E and angle F intercept arc GH. The inscribed angles of a circle theorem states, if two inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. So angle E is congruent to angle F by the inscribed angles of a circle theorem. So the measure of angle F is equal to the measure of angle E which is equal to 75 degrees. Pretty easy. Okay, these are examples that we do in our notes together in class. Here's another core concept. Now we're on to polygons. An inscribed polygon uh, is a polygon that when it's all vertices lie on the circle. Again, that's the outside part of the circle. And the circle that contains the vertices is a circumscribed circle. So if it's inside, it's inscribed. But see how the circle here is on the outside of the polygon? So circumscribed means outside. Inscribed means inscribed. New vocabulary. Okay, so we have two theorems for this. Theorem 10.12. If a right triangle is inscribed in a circle, then the hypotenuse is a diameter of the circle. Conversely, if one side of an inscribed triangle is a diameter of the circle, then the triangle is a right triangle, and the opposite, the angle opposite the diameter is the right triangle. So here you see that the measure of ABC equals 90, if and only if AC is a diameter. You can try it, try to sketch it. There's only one possible way that happens. ABC is 90 degrees, if and only if AC is a diameter. 
And then we have an inscribed quadrilateral theorem. A quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if, remember both ways, if and only if, its opposite angles are supplementary, okay? So this sort of makes sense. If you can connect any two of these, right? So say you connect E and G, then you have a right triangle here and a right triangle here. If you connect D and F, then you have a right triangle here and a right triangle here. So both of those together are gonna add up to 90 plus 90 or 180. So D, E, F, and G lie on circle C if and only if the measure of angle D plus F is equal to E plus G, which is 180 degrees. Again, we'll use this to solve problems. Just a few more examples. Find the value of each variable. Solutions. Part A. Notice triangle ABC is inscribed in a circle, and segment AB is a diameter. So angle C is a right angle, and the measure of angle C is equal to 90 degrees by the inscribed right triangle theorem. So you can write the equation 2x degrees is equal to 90 degrees. To solve for x, divide each side of the equation by 2 and x is equal to 45. So the value of x is 45. Part B, you need to find the value of y and the value of z. D, E, F, G is inscribed in a circle. So opposite angles are supplementary by the inscribed quadrilateral theorem. To find the value of z, you can write the equation, the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle F is equal to 180 degrees. So using the information in the diagram, z plus 80 is equal to 180. Subtract 80 from each side of the equation, and z is equal to 100. To find the value of y, you can write the equation, the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle G is equal to 180 degrees. Using the information in the diagram, 120 plus y is equal to 180. Subtract 120 from each side of the equation, and y is equal to 60. So the value of z is 100 and the value of y is 60. Again, very straightforward. You use the theorem, you figure it out, bam, here's example five. We're not doing constructions, I'm clicking through this. And here's how you would use a circumscribed circle in an example. Your camera has a 90 degree field of vision and you want to photograph the front of a statue. You stand at a location in which the front of the statue is all that appears in your camera's field of vision, as shown. You want to change your location. Where else can you stand so that the front of the statue is all that appears in your camera's field of vision? Solution. From the inscribed right triangle theorem, you know that if a right triangle is inscribed in a circle, then the hypotenuse of the triangle is a diameter of the circle. So draw the circle that has the front of the statue as a diameter, as shown. The statue fits perfectly within your camera's 90 degree field of vision from any point on the semicircle of the statue. Interesting, right? That is something that's very handy. And I believe class examples, we are at the end. So it's time for you to head on over to Big Ideas and do your assignment.